Hi, my name is Catherine Bazo, and in 2022, I began a six-week internship in Trinidad and Tobago at the National Museum and Art Gallery, NMAG. I spent my days in the main art gallery among school children, tourists, and families, immersed in a space filled with artworks that visualized Trinidadian identity. My role within NMAG was to document the physical conditions of these artworks, and I grew to intimately know each piece through a process of condition reporting. Creating a condition report requires close observation of the artwork's surface and structure, and though the standard condition report does not include cultural context, my personal interactions with these objects led to an investigation of content. As I worked, I realized that by including the cultural connotations of the artwork, the condition report evolved from a physical justification for preservation into a more expansive advocate for the preservation of culture and identity. Specific artworks within NMAG's holdings warranted the inclusion of this cultural information. And for example, within the report of Alfredo Cadayo's Trinidad Folklore, I deviate from the standard description of the object by noting not only the figures comprising the painting, but also their context within Trinidadian folklore. Though documenting the physical condition of the artwork is still the emphasis of the report, the inclusion of any cultural information now ties the artwork to its cultural context, which can work in condition or in tandem with condi the condition data to provide the museum, conservators, and the community with essential information to guide future preservation projects. These expanded reports allow the community to see the physical need for these projects as a part of cultural expression and reaffirming of local identities through the visual arts. This reaffirmation of identity is achieved not only through making the objects viewable, but by placing them within a legitimized space, they are inherently seen as more valuable to local and global audiences. This accredited and accessible museum actively promotes local art and culture as high art, which is deemed valuable and worthy. And by placing these artworks within a nationally recognized space, it not only educates visitors, whether local or foreign, on what the art community has to offer, but establishes that Trinidadian voices are important, valuable, and needed within a global world. As NMAG works to preserve and legitimize local heritage and identity, the artworks which reflected that same ethos became the focus of my project. Alfredo Cadayo's Trinidad Folklore and Leroy Clark's Weavers of the Dust are these types of artworks. The pair of artists and paintings reflect a history of Trinidadian art, where Trinidadian and Afro-Caribbean identity is investigated and validated within a contemporary art world. Cadayo's Trinidad Folklore poses a dynamic and captivating scene with distinct characters from Trinidadian mythology. The Wens are the, children of, are the souls of children who have died before they're baptized. Mama Glo is the mother of the water, and her partner, Papa Bois, is the elderly protector and father of the animals of the forest. La Jablesse is a devil woman who hexes men and leads them deep into the forest. The bookman is a devil-like figure who writes the name of peoples into his book of damaged souls. And the moon gazer, or phantom, is a tall white being who stands at crossroads and traps anyone who passes through the wide stance of his legs. Cadayo's painting was the first visualization of Trinidad's folklore. He transformed the traditionally oral form of this mythology into a solid visual account of each character and identity. The artwork relies on a shared local lore for its viewers to recognize the characters who in many cases share their lived experiences. Painted in 1958, in an era prior to Trinidad's independence from Britain in 1962, it was crucial to visualize Afro-Caribbean culture and folklore as it reaffirmed local specific identities in contrast to one constructed and imposed by a foreign colonial power. The commission of this artwork by the Art Society of Trinidad and Tobago and Cadayo's own efforts to illustrate the pantheon of Trinidad's folklore demonstrate the individual and societal desire to depict Afro-Caribbean subjects within the public sphere, a space that was previously reserved for subject matter that fit a colonially defined definition of appropriate and high art. That significant narrative is ultimately what justifies its preservation and the considerable efforts which such preservation requires. I spent almost two days writing the report on this painting. I became enthralled with each of the characters and found it hard to put down my flashlight. The conservation of this piece not only preserves the physical artwork, which can be viewed and interacted with, but preserves the Trinidad identities and histories that are ingrained within it. Almost 20 years after Cadayo created Trinidad folklore, Leroy Clark found inspiration in his piece 
and utilize the folkloric subject to establish Trinidadian identities within a now post-colonial space. Upon the dissolution of colonial rule, Trinis needed to establish their identity within a global world. Because of this, Clark intentionally focused on Afro-Caribbean folklore as essential to a Trinidadian national identity. Though actively working to share this folklore, Clark's Weavers of the Dust has an ambiguous narrative. The enigmatic subject of the painting is amplified through Clark's style, where figures are engulfed with a network of lines and interconnected symbols. It is unclear where the characters begin or end, and these almost hidden subjects may reflect the shared and esoteric knowledge of Trinidad's folklore by the local community. Though the subjects of the painting are generally ambiguous, Clark references Cadao's depiction of the phantom and the serpent-headed Mama de Lo. These references to folkloric characters and Clark's fundamental knowledge of Afro-Caribbean religious beliefs and folklore empower the artwork to serve as a visualization of Trinidadian identity. Weavers of the Dust builds upon the creation of folklore as an acceptable subject, while its subversion of images from Trinidad folklore places this subject, this artwork, within the contemporary art practices of a post-colonial space. For Clark, this immediate post-colonial world in which Trinidadians were searching for an expression of local identity is characterized by the need to keep Afrocentric folkloric subjects in the vanguard. This artwork is surrounded by an entire social framework that reaffirms the need to include cultural context within condition reports and justifies its conservation as well as the preservation of other cultural objects. These two paintings visualize Trinidad's folklore confront the colonial standard of art and empower real Trinidadian identities. These contexts provide radical justification for the preservation, protection, and continued display. By centering my conservation project around these two artworks, I hope to establish that the preservation of works that visualize local identity empower the individuals who see themselves in those pieces. This empowerment is essential in establishing local identities within a global space. By establishing these identities, Trinidadian histories, practices, and traditions can continue to exist and thrive. The national concern for the preservation of artwork and culture continues with active involvement with local peoples. This involvement may be communication to determine proper terminology or collaboration to create entire conservation projects with culture groups like the Santa Rosa First Peoples Community, with whom we visited and whom my peer, Raven Bagel Long, worked with to establish accurate terminology for the museum when describing First Peoples. By involving the community, the conservation efforts of NMAG extends beyond the bounded museum setting and create both local and national advocation for the art object. Cultural reports, condition reports that include cultural context, both recognize and honor local culture. These reports help museums create an authenticated and accessible space that provides the opportunity for visitors to view their identities reflected in works validated by the museum. The community can see this validation and in turn view their local culture as significant within a global setting. Condition reports also provide val valuable data, which is central in the safeguarding of culture and artwork. The safeguarding begins with a physical art object and extends into the heritage that surrounds the piece. This form of art conservation that includes cultural context actively participates in the reaffirmation and preservation of Trinidadian identities. While working in the gallery, groups of children and parents would surround my table, excited and curious about the work I was doing. I was able to interact with the community, telling, chatting with visitors about my project, and listening to their memories and stories attached to the artwork that I was working on. I'm grateful that I was a part of NMAG's conservation efforts. My time there transformed the way I viewed art, and I began to realize that the artwork that I was surrounded by reflected the people, landscapes, and histories of Trinidad that I saw each day. As the conservation efforts of the museum continue, the community will in turn see a validation of their people, their landscapes, and their histories. Thank you.